a thriving downtown makes property values go up around it. And Jacksonville's downtown is about to go from being an eight hour downtown where people just go to work to a 16 hour downtown where people live, work, play. Mm -hmm. And the way that that happens is through a couple of different mechanisms that we've talked about, right? Number one is clustering. You want to explain what clustering is? Yes. If you have goals to have the biggest impact and you are developing an, an area, we'll call it downtown Jacksonville, you have to be very thoughtful about how you tackle this. And the best way to receive the biggest impact is to cluster your development. And that's what you're starting to see from developers like JWB. For those of you who came to be a part of the summit just four months ago or so, we walked downtown Jacksonville and we got to see the projects that JWB owns, mm -hmm. as well as Gateway, which is the fund that JWB set up to develop additional properties downtown. And guess what? They're on the same street, yeah. right? We did a little loop around here and there is so much clustered activity that's either happening right now or is about to break ground. And that's by design, because mm -hmm. when you do that, you can start to place make, you can start to improve experiences for people to be able to walk out of one store and into another yeah. or walk out mm -hmm. of one store and into their apartment. And you can solve problems like parking and other challenges that people have. You can do this through effective placemaking. So clustered development is the key, uh, especially for a downtown like Jacksonville, which is roughly 3.9 square miles wide, which is a which is a big downtown. Yeah. You got to cluster it. And in simple terms, that just means buildings communicating with each other across the street, right? So like I want to go from one to the other because it looks attractive and it's easy to get to and it solves for like shading and, you know, having public transportation and different things like that. So now when we look at this development that's happening in the stadium, then the sports entertainment district and the shipyards, that is a cluster, right? Like that is all coming up together. It's going to communicate really well. We look across downtown, right? Diagonally to what you just referenced, the, the cluster that JWB already has developed and the Pearl Street District, which is this thing that is happening with Gateway Jacks. That's another cluster where it's all going to communicate. And what you start to notice in these downtown urban cores is that, you know, like when you're building a puzzle, what are the first things you look for? The corner pieces, yeah. right? You look for the corner pieces in order to frame it. And then after that, what do you look for? The edges. And then once you have the edges and the corner pieces, everything else gets a lot easier. And these clusters that happen in the downtown at the at opposing corners are the corner pieces. Then the rest of the edges are going to start filling in with the UF graduate school. Then the landing is also happening. Yeah. And that big public project that's going to be happening there mm -hmm. with art and whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. So like you start seeing the edges happen. And once those edges are set, the rest of the puzzle starts to fit in, right? So these to me are, this is what's happening right now in downtown Jacksonville, which in 10 years, once all this stuff is there, people are going to start wanting to fill these other things in on their own. Mm -hmm. And then that's going to lead to this thriving downtown where people are going to want to bring jobs to and more relocate to more people are going to want to live down there because there's going to be more jobs. The economic flight will start spinning. And then that's what creates all these 6,000 homes that you, me, and the rest of our community owns around the urban core. The home price appreciation curve bends because now there's all this demand for that housing around it. And we happen to have some that we give to workforce residents while there's also another mix of other, you know, other housing stock going up around. It. Yeah. I mean, I think you said that really well. I, I think that was great. And so for me, when I hear that, if, if I'm not me, if I'm not a returning veteran of the Not Your Average Investor show, if I'm just showing up for the first time or maybe just seeing this on mm -hmm. social somewhere, you might be saying to yourself, I feel like I've heard this before. Like, I feel like, you know, like the pitch mm -hmm. of like this big boom is, mm -hmm. is, is like a, it's a, it's a pitch that I've heard before, but here's what I love the most about this pitch. It's that you don't have to be an early adopter at this phase, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to be like JWB was five years ago, starting to make plans to actually go and buy downtown buildings before yep. anybody was buying downtown buildings and put the capital out, right? You don't have to be a believer in downtown as far as people are actually already moving there like we had to be. Or if you go all the way back five years, 10 years, 15 years ago, like you didn't have this data to show what revitalized downtown cities do to neighborhoods that are right around downtown. Correct. So what I love about this pitch is that you don't have to be an early adopter. You don't have to take this type of risk that you typically have to take as a developer or as somebody who wants to capitalize on an investment like this. And you do that by two things. 
you mitigate your risk two ways. Mm -hmm. Number one, you do that because you're investing in single family rental properties that provide cash flow every mm -hmm. single month, right? The reason that I'm coming to you and saying you should be investing in single family rental properties around this beautiful puzzle that we have in downtown, which is being filled in, is because I don't want you to take outsized risks, right? How much money could you make if you bought a downtown building and went all in and all that? Sure, you could probably take more money, but I don't know when that's going to turn around. Became a commercial building developer? And yeah, there's a ton <laughs> of risk there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, JWB is doing that yeah, yeah. on a small scale yeah. because we're ready for that yeah. and we're here and we know what we're doing. But that's not the right thing for an investor out there. What I love for all of our clients is risk mitigated ways to take advantage of outsized capital appreciation. Mm -hmm. And that's why investing in single family rental properties, these beautiful single family rental properties that pay for themselves every single month that are close enough to what's going on downtown that rents and home prices will go up over time. That's the first thing that I love about it. And the second thing is you don't have to look far to become a believer in downtown Jacksonville once you actually know what to look for. Yep. Even before this JAGS deal has been announced, even before there was $4 billion of construction going on downtown. Let me say that again. There's $4 billion of construction going on downtown, not named the stadium, before the stadium. Mm -hmm. This will only add to it. Before any of that, you already saw people starting to move downtown. Mm -hmm. We had about 3,500 people living downtown for the longest time, as long as I can remember. I've lived here for the better part of 18 years. It was about 3,500 up until about three years ago, four years ago. And now we're at 8,500. Yep. And that's still small for a city who has 1.6 million people in the metropolitan statistical area. Yep. But that's a lot of growth in a short period of time. And they haven't even seen some of the amenities. They haven't seen the stadium of the future. Mm -hmm. right? They haven't seen a lot of these buildings coming out of the ground. So if you know where to look, that story tells itself. And that reduces risk by seeing people that are already moving downtown. And of course, a single family rental property. So I think it's, I think it's both the upside here, but it's also the risk mitigation that I love the most about it. I love it too, man.